Hello and welcome back. Um, today is now part 10 of how to create an endless runner using Unity and C Sharp. Um, today we're going to be covering a few things. Um, we're going to be making a script for the camera to follow the player instead of having it as a child of the player. And we're also going to be, and what I mean by a child of the player is if we come down to the player, it's got the camera there. Um, but the other thing we're going to be doing is we're just going to be adding some environmental animations. Um, so let's get started with the script thing. Um, to begin with, we just want to create a new C Sharp script. Which we're just going to call our camera controller. And then we're just going to open up this script. And then in here, we're just going to need some new variables. Um, our camera's position is still going to be based off our player's position. So we need to store our player's position. So we need a public. game object player which would just be our player and then we're going to want to do this in the fixed update not the update because um, we're going to be moving the player and the camera together and we want it to be happening at the exact same time so it's not glitchy at all and to do that we're just going to want to do it in the fixed update um, so that they're being called at the same time so in here we just want to transform dot position so we're moving the position of the object that this script is on which is going to be our camera and it's going to be equal to a new vector 3 which is going to be our players um, position so transform dot position and then it's going to be its position on the x axis which is just forwards and backwards so this basically just says um, the position of our camera is equal to the position of our players x position um, and its x position is forward and backwards so this is basically doing exactly the same as what we have at the moment um, except for when we jump the camera won't jump with us so let's just finish that off. Um, since it's a vector three, it can't just have that. So we also need point zero and zero just to fill in the rest of the vector. And now that we have that, um, and we have it in our fixed update, we just need to come to our player script. And actually, I'll just show you what happens if we keep it like this to begin with. So if we just save that and come back into our game, Wait for it to load. And then press play. Uh, nothing will happen just yet because we haven't put the script on anything. But that's good because first we'll just show you how it works. When we were jumping, the camera would follow with us. Uh, with us and when we went forwards, the camera also follows. Um, but instead of doing it like that, we're going to want to take our camera off our player. And then add our script onto here. And then in the player position on the script, we just want to drag our player into there. So now if we press play, you'll see that the camera is still following the player, but when we jump, it doesn't follow him upwards. And like I said, because we haven't gone and changed the player script, it's a little bit jinky at the moment. So we'll come back into, uh, down to our scripts, go to our player script, and we just want to grab the line where we were moving the player forwards and cut it from the update and put it back in the fixed update just so the player being moved forwards and the camera being moved forwards are happening at the exact same time and then that will fix that problem so if we save that and come back into here press play once it's loaded We should have the same thing, but a lot smoother. So press play, and there we go. So now we can jump, and camera uh, doesn't follow. Um, as you can see, the player is going off the screen a little bit. So to fix that, I'm just going to change his jump height a little bit, because he is jumping a little bit too high. So we'll go down to like 1800, and we'll just have a quick look at that. 
One other thing we might want to do is, at the moment, seeing the character is in the center of the screen, he doesn't get much of a warning for whatever is coming in front of him. Um, so, we might just want to come back into our uh, camera controller, and then on our X, we'll just plus 2 onto our X position, which means it will move our character 2 in that position. Um, plus 2 is moving the character... I mean, moving the camera in this direction, so the camera should move in front of the player when we press play. And now we have our player off to the left hand side, and it just gives a bit more warning of what's in front of us. Cool. So now we have all that stuff fixed up, um, we'll get into the um, art. And if you didn't watch the last video, which we created all the background art, and we also fixed that little glitch that you're seeing there, I just haven't applied it to the whole level yet. Um, the little glitch there. But, so yeah, if you go back to that last video, you can see all that. But, let's get started. So, we'll go back to Pisco. Um, and the thing I was thinking of creating is just something like a torch with some fire on it. Um, just something to put on the background. Um, on the wall, um, just something simple to demonstrate how simple it is to create animations in um, Unity. So we'll begin by just adding the handle for our torch, and then we'll add some flame. Um, seeing it's like fire we're trying to do, we just want it to look organic, so we might have to make a lot of tweaks and stuff as we go along. And just see what it looks right. And then if you just click uh, duplicate frame, you get a new frame. Um, animations is like one of the best uses for Piscal because it makes animating really simple things really easy. Um, once you get to more complicated objects, it's not really as easy. But yeah, Piscal can be pretty useful. We're starting to get something that's alright, but still a little bit dodgy. So, we'll just play around with this for a little bit. I'm actually liking the look of that already. Might just add another frame and call that it for this. Obviously you can spend more time on yours or add anything else, seeing all these principles will work for anything else. So I'm just looking over here to see what it looks like. I'm pretty happy with that. Um, we'll just add some more colours to it. So we'll come down and get more of a yellowy colour. And just add that in the base. Yeah, I'm happy with that. We'll just change the handle to brown. And then we'll export this. Um, so when we're exporting an animation, it's a little bit different. Oh, actually, it's exactly the same, allied. So we'll just download our PMG again. Need Photoshop, so we'll come back over here, go to your downloads, go away Photoshop, and drag in our new animation, um, our new texture into our assets, and then you'll see it's come in just like that with each image next to each other. So we need to change our settings on our uh, sprite, so we'll change it to 240 like we were um, before our other art, go to point, and from single to multiple, seeing we have multiple images in this sprite, and hit apply, 
and then we want to come to the sprite editor. Um, and then we need to slice these so we have four textures. Um, we'll go grid by cell size, saying we know the size of this, and we know that each of these is 32 by 32. So uh, we can just go 32, slice, and then we get all of them sliced up nicely. And then if we go apply, we have our four textures now down here. Um, and this is where it gets really good. All we need to do to create a animation is drag it in. And then because our scale was off because of how we initially set up the game, we just want to check what the scale of one of these blocks is. So it's 7.5. So we'll come over to this and change this over to 7.5. And now they'll have the same pixel size. And then maybe just position it somewhere in the center. Around there maybe. Just have it in an area where they can't not jump through it so that it's obvious that it's not going to hurt you. Just so they get taught that if they have any questions about it. And then we just need to put all of these into our blocks. But first, let me just show you how that is an animation. So if we come to our windows and come to our animator, which is here, and it will open up this window. Actually, we don't want our animator. We want our animation. So if we open up that window, it will come down to this. And then if we just click on our animation, our sprite, that is, you'll see that we have our four frames and a keyframe. And if we drag through on the timeline, we can skip through all our animations. So if we press play, that's our animation playing. And the samples, we can change the speed. A lower value is slower, and a faster value, I mean a higher value is faster. I think that's the way it works. I could be wrong about that. Nope, that's the way it works. So we'll have a value of 10. And then that's a little animation. Um, like I said, we just need to put it into all of our blocks. So to do that, we just need to find what block this is that we're currently on. We'll just rename this quickly to fire. And this is block one. We'll just close up all these blocks. And we're just going to put fire onto block one. Wait. Yeah, just block one. So now fire is a part of that block. We can just hit apply. And the reason we can't see it now is because of the layer in order. So if we just change that to two, we'll be able to see it. Um, might want to change it to one, just so that it's only one position in front of the wall, just in case we add later thing, uh, um, other things later on and it gets confusing. So just hit apply. And now if we press play, whenever we come up against this block, there should be that torch and it should be animating. Okay, so we didn't make it there. One thing you might, ah, and there it is, and it's animating. One thing you might be uh, noticing is when I hit multiple blocks, I'm losing multiple bits of health. Uh, health. That's because we still only have, um, we still have two colliders for each block. We could do it this way, but it would probably be a bit more fair to turn off the box collider on one of them, and then extend the size of the other one downwards. Just so that if we do collide with this block, and we don't just collide like this, but we collide like this, we only lose one health for going through this. Instead of going through two, when we'd lose two health, we'll just lose one, which is a little bit more fair. So um, we might want to make all those changes and place our torches where we want. Um, I'm just going to place a torch in every single block and fix up all of these, and I'll probably change the scales of all of them. So I'll just fast forward through this part, or I might just skip it, and then I'll be back.
Okay, so I've gone through and I've put a torch in the middle of every one, and I've applied it, and I've also come through and just resized all my colliders, like you should have done in an earlier video, but for some reason I just didn't. So now that we have all that, let's just press play and have a look at what we did this video. So we have it so the player is offset and the camera doesn't follow when we jump up. We have it so that we have our animations and we have it so that if we hit multiple blocks we only lose one health as you can see. Cool. Um, I might make one other change quickly. I don't really like it how hard it is to see the death screen. So I'm just going to come to the canvas and change that panel to a darker color and then change its transparency just so the world gets dark when you die. So then we'll press play and have a look at that quickly. So then when we die, cool, it goes darker. Cool, I like that a bit more. Um, we might also just change the appearance of our buttons a little bit. So if we just come to our buttons, we can just change it to use no sprite, and that way they'll become square. And we'll just change their colors. No idea what color. Yeah, maybe we shouldn't have changed their colors. We'll just go to a gray. And then obviously that means we need to change their text. So then we'll go like that. And then, yeah, cool. So, yeah, we have it so we have all of our basic animations and all the uh, camera script. And next time we might go a little bit further into animations or we might try and make the game a little bit more fun or something. Um, but yeah, I hope this was helpful. Um, if you enjoyed the video, please like, comment and subscribe. And I'll see you next time. Have a good day.